Hello everyone, and welcome to the Brick Formula review of LEGO set 70705. And this is the Bug Obliterator. It has 711 pieces for ages 8 to 14. And it's from the Galaxy Squad series, and this set retails for $79.99. And here in the front, you see a really cool picture of the Bug Obliterator doing his thing. And that bug is really going to get it. On the side here, we have the minifigs. I'll talk about them later. And here in the back, we're going to see a lot of the neat features that are in this set. And I'll talk about this in more detail coming up. Here are the minifigures, and first up is the winged alien mosquitoid, who is nothing special because you might have seen him before in other sets, where he's got those really big bug eyes, and it looks like he's on a liquid diet too. And I bet he pees a lot because that looks like a small tank that he's got there. And here's the view of the back, and here is the printing. Next we have Jack Fireblade, and his printing is pretty much the same as all the other heroes, except that he's in orange. So here's a closer look, and it looks pretty nice. And there's the view of the back. And here's his face, where he looks kind of handsome, I guess. But to the aliens, I bet he's the ugliest one of them all. And just to keep the mystery, he does come with a face mask so that he looks like a real pilot. Next we have the robot sidekick, and seriously, this guy needs a name. I mean, can you imagine asking him to do something for you? Like, you, yeah, you, can you give me a drink? Because it looks like you have a lot of fruit punch in there. And seriously, this gun looks pretty wicked. Anyway, and it's kind of oversized too, but we'll get to that later. So here's what it looks like from the front there. There's the back. And honestly, I'm not too fond of the wings, but some people like it, so I guess we'll just leave it at that. And here's the printing beneath the armor. Pretty nice. And finally, we have Ashley Starstrider. For some reason, I thought she was related to Jack. Actually, she could be. I don't know. It's really none of my business. But anyway, speaking of Jack, she's actually wearing the same exact uniform as he does. So there we are. And the only thing different here is the face, where you can see that her lips are kind of like a bluish color, maybe aqua. I guess she's either really cold or she's really into those blueberry flavored ices. But anyway, she comes with a face mask so that you don't keep staring at her lips. Now we'll take a look at the alien dragonfly, and to be honest, I'm not really into insects or anything, but there's no denying that this is a really cool looking model that they got here. And here's the view of the top, where it looks like a dragonfly. Here's the view of the side, and if you look carefully, the tail can move up, but you can only bend it like right here, because the cocoon's in the way for this hinge joint right here. But you can always take that off, and that's what that looks like. And the tail can also move back and forth like that. Here's the view of the bottom. And here's the view of the front. Now the only weird thing about this dragonfly is that I do feel that it doesn't have enough weapons on here because if you look carefully, we only have a cannon in the front there. And we have a tail gun, which you can't really aim straight with because the tail's curved. So I guess this is mostly meant for capturing and transporting your prisoners. So first we'll just put our pilot in there. Okay, and he goes in there pretty easily. And we can put Jack here into the cocoon. And there we go. And that's how that works. Stick him back in there. And you can also use the front to capture Ashley. And just close that up. And there, I would say the orange team is pretty screwed. It's too bad you can't use the legs to capture the robot sidekick. I think these are just here for looks. But otherwise, it's a really cool model. Next, we'll check out the armored rover of the obliterator. And obviously, the coolest feature here is the rocket launcher. It just comes up just like that and it goes back down really nicely too. And what I love about the most is that the gaps aren't that big and it hides the missiles really well. And they did a really good job with this that I'm actually inspired to use this in some of my future creations. It's really neat. Anyway, here's the view of the side. There's a view of the top and there's the back. Now down here we have the pegs that will attach to the ship, which I'll show you later. Now the only thing I don't like about the rocket launcher is that they use these axle rods in the back here and they kind of stick out, it doesn't look that good. I really wish they used the same mechanism that they did in the Alien Conquest Earth Defense HQ. If you recall, they used a container piece to shoot the flick fire missiles. And that one is much better because the mechanism actually looks like it's part of the rocket launcher. This doesn't really do it, and it doesn't look that good. But I guess I can understand why they did this, because they only have so much space to work with once they put this into the obliterator. But anyway, okay, here's the view of the other side. There's the bottom, not much to that. And here's the view of the front. 
Now, when you take a look at the inside, we have a lot of space there, and this is the ideal spot to put in your robot sidekick because it's just big enough for him. And as you can see, the wings barely made it too. They just go into the corner and that's it, he's not budging. But because we have three orange team minifigs, I find it better just to put Ashley to control the rocket launcher from the back there, and I'll have Jack do the driving. This way I can put the sidekick in the ship and everyone's happy. And there we go, and finally, I'll just shoot some missiles. Just show you how well they work. And there we go. Oops, friendly fire. But anyway, there we go. Pretty neat, right? Oh, and one more thing. You can also attach the robot sidekick's laser gun up here. And now everyone can have some fruit punch. See? Pretty neat. And finally, it's time to check out the attack ship, otherwise known as the obliterator. And this thing looks awesome no matter how you have it transformed. Although I prefer it with the wings wide open, and the cockpit in the lower position, and this thing just looks really awesome. And I had a lot of fun playing with this thing too, just flying it around. Of course, I made sure that no one was home and I locked the door, so yeah, anyway. Here's a view of the side, and you'll notice right away that there's a lot of guns on this thing. So I bet it runs out of ammo real fast. But hey, if that's what it takes to turn the bugs into Swiss cheese, then that sounds good to me. And here's the view of the back. You'll notice that we have a lot of engines and thrusters in the back here, and... You know, I guess if that's what it takes to go from fast to faster, then so be it. Of course, I bet it runs out of fuel real quick. Okay, here's the view of the other side. And here's the view of the top. This thing is just beautiful looking. And there's the view of the bottom. And finally, we have the front there. The one to be on this side of the ship. Anyway, now to show you how the mechanism works, you notice on the bottom here, we have this axle piece. Obviously, pushing in here, we'll push this out. And you want to make sure the cockpit is in the upper position. And this is where the rover attaches to. It's a little weird and clumsy to do it in midair. So I recommend you push it in while it's on a flat surface. But it can be done. And there we are. And we'll just close that up. And that's what it looks like all around. And it's got quite a bit of weight to it. It's not too heavy, but it's definitely not light either. And finally, we can take a look at the inside of the cockpit here. It's pretty spacious too, you can fit any of the minifigs in there, but when it comes to the robot sidekick, he's not going to attach to the studs. And what I did was I pushed the wings all the way up on his little backpack over there. This way he'll go in there a little bit easier. And you close that up. And now everyone can go home safely in the ship. Pretty nice, right? And now we can move on to the recommendations. Overall, this is a really good set. I know I say it a lot, but I mean it every time I say it, especially with this set too. When it comes to the value, we have a price per piece ratio of 11.3 cents per piece, and we're getting about 80 to $100 worth of parts here, not including the minifigs. And when it comes to play value, it's really good too. There's just a lot to do in this set. Okay, we have the armored rover and the attack ship, and they can combine together and split apart. We have three orange team minifigs, and the dragonfly is a pretty fun model too, just by itself. And while this may be the most expensive Galaxy Squad out there right now, I think it's worth every penny because it is just so much fun. The only bad thing about this set really is the stickers. If you look at it, that's a lot of stickers. That's way too much. But otherwise, I think this will pass off as a must-have for just about any LEGO enthusiast out there. And that's it. That sums up my review. I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.
Next we have Jack Fireblade. And his printing is pretty much the same as all the other heroes too, except that he's an orange. And he comes with a pretty big gun. Let's take a closer look at that. And my camera's not focusing. Hmm. That's weird. Oh, there it is. Up next we have the robot sidekick. And seriously, this guy needs a name. I'm thinking of Gatorade, but I think that name's been taken already. Actually, I'm just really thirsty. I'll be right back.